Breaking news, a brand new Fox News poll just released just moments ago. And Donald Trump takes the number one spot. Take a look right there. 26% Ben Carson is second. He's at 23%. Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio both tied at third with 11%. Jeb Bush, Mike Huckabee, John Kasich, and Rand Paul all at 4%. And Carly Fiorina continues to drop her support now at only 3%, bringing up the rear Chris Christie at just 2%. And the most important issues for GOP voters, not surprising, it is the economy, followed closely by security and immigration. And who do voters think most qualified to handle the economy? Well, 42% say it's Donald Trump. Not a surprise there. Ted Cruz at 10, uh, 10% and number two, followed closely by Ben Carson with 9%. On the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton holding on to a commanding lead against her rival, Bernie Sanders. So the question now is, which GOP candidate could actually beat Hillary Clinton? In this poll, 37% say it's Donald Trump. He's followed by Ben Carson at 18% and Ted Cruz at 11%. Here to help us break it all down, Darren Shaw, Republican consultant for Fox News poll and a University of Texas professor. Uh, you know, uh, th these polls, I got to tell you, they're so fascinating. It feels like the plot thickens every single time and we get these different narratives and it feels OK. The outsiders are still hanging on there and beneath the surface. We're seeing jockeying now. Is there something now going on, Professor, with these polls that we can actually say maybe that bottom five may want to consider throwing in a towel? Yeah, I think this poll in particular, you see a little bit of a segmentation into what I would consider four tiers. So you got, as you mentioned, you got Trump and Carson at the top, kind of about uh, you know, 10, 11, 12 points clear of the next tier, which looks like it's, it's Cruz and Rubio at this point. Then you drop down and you've got Bush, uh, you know, you still got um, you know, Kasich, who's risen just a little bit, Rand Paul, Mike Huckabee, and that, and I would even, I would even probably clump Fiorina and Christie in that third tier, the sort of vying for attention, and then you've got, you know, the others receiving votes tier, which is, you know, Pataki and Jindal and Graham and Gilmore. So, but, but this is the first time where I think you could actually cluster the candidates into four distinct groups and that's that's a change and i think that's fairly significant so let's talk about the first here of course the outsiders ben carson donald trump flip-flopping a little bit uh quinnipiac uh, also uh, sort of echoing the same thing with their poll coming in this morning what are we seeing here with respect to a lot of people in my mind uh not taking ben carson seriously at all i mean more or less just kind of you know blowing him off even yeah. even donald trump uh, when he, uh, it's not, I wouldn't even call it an attack of Ben Carson. He just talks about the Ben's not the guy, low energy guy, not equipped to deal with the Chinese. It just feels like he's being written off despite the fact that he's, he's hanging in there. To a lesser degree, Trump, even by the experts, are, is still being written off as well. Yeah, I, I, I'm astounded by the extent to which people claim certainty over what's going to happen in this race. I, I mean... You know, I, I study this stuff for a living, and honestly, this will probably undercut my credibility, I'm, I don't really have a strong <laughs> clue as to what's going to happen in the long run, but maybe admitting that's the first uh, step towards figuring something out. I, I think one thing that's been clear is that Trump seems to have hit a bit of a ceiling. Now, if, if Kennedy start dropping out, I, I think that changes, but he's basically had a quarter of the vote now for three months. You know, not much more than that, not much less. He's 24, 25, 26 percent in poll after poll. As you mentioned, Ben Carson, however, has, has risen pretty dramatically. I'm with you. It's not clear to me that Carson has the ceiling that some people seem to assume he has. I don't know. You know, he's never he's not gotten 25, 30 percent of the vote. But this is a guy with enormous personal appeal. You know, a guy who just voters look at and, and they they think right. this is a smart guy. He can learn. I trust him. That's a different dynamic than we see with Donald Trump. Uh, let's take it a step further then. We, we, at some point, the field will begin to narrow down. Uh, and as that does, we start to make assumptions. Who will win these? Uh, let's just go again with the first tier. Typically, Ben Carson has done extraordinarily well when you lump them all together. First choice, second choice, even in this particular poll, he then edges out Donald Trump. Who do you think, uh, again, where were these potential voters or all these other folks out there where would they probably go if it were up to just Donald, Donald Trump and Ben Carson? Right. I, I think we've got a second choice question in the poll. It's sort of standard question. We ask it. A lot of other entities ask a second choice. And what we're seeing is that, first of all, Trump does okay with second choice voters. You know, there's a presumption that if, you, if you're not for Trump, then you think he's completely unqualified. That's not true. 
There are a, a number of people who list Trump as her second choice. But Carson is emerging, along with Rubio, as a very strong second choice candidate. Now, Trump actually gets more second choice support than Rubio, but proportionally, Rubio actually does pretty well as a second choice candidate. So, I mean, if I'm gazing into my very hazy crystal ball at this point, it, it looks like Marco Rubio may be getting some traction as an alternative should one of the front runners, you know, one of the two top vote getters fade.